Let's continue with Unit 3 with Major Events of the American Revolution. In the first part of Unit 3, Lessons 6, 7, and 8, we looked at how British policies such as the Proclamation of 1763, uh, British mercantilism, and the tax acts which the Americans resented because they lacked representation in Parliament, how all these things together caused Americans to more and more resist and ultimately reject British rule in favor of independence. So now we're going to look at the actual American Revolution and several battles and events during that time. So let's continue. First we start with Lesson 9, The Revolution Begins. Now you see we have a number of teaks that we can identify the American Revolution and the drafting of the Declaration of Independence. In this lesson we're going to look at, date, at events from the date 1775 to 1776. We can explain why 1776 is a really important date in American history. We'll look at the roles of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Thomas Paine. Then we can explain details of battles, particularly the Lexing Battle of Lexington and Concord, and declaring independence. That we can uh, identify the places where these things happened. And lastly, that we can analyze the leadership qualities of General George Washington. So anytime you have a war, you want to look at the two sides. So we're going to start with the Continental Army under the command of General George Washington. The Continental Army had several strengths. They were highly motivated because they were fighting for, the for their cause, in this case, independence. They had the home field advantage. This was their home and they knew the land. They had a good leader in General George Washington. And finally, in seven, after 1778, we're going to see the influence of foreign aid and how that changed the outcome of the war. However, they had some glaring weaknesses. They didn't have enough men, enough soldiers, and those that they had were only there for a short time. What soldiers they had were mostly poorly trained and very few professional soldiers compared to the British Army, which had a number of professionals. Uh, they lacked money and supplies, uh, and also the, they paid in paper, not gold and silver, the way the British did. And they really didn't have a standing navy. They had a few privateers, meaning private ships, in some cases pirates, uh, versus literally the world's best navy. So let's look at the British Army under their commanders, Generals Howe and Clinton, the British had some pretty obvious strengths. One, they had a very large army and navy. They were at this time the world's greatest superpower. This army was well trained and it was experienced because it had fought all over the world. They had plenty of money and supplies and the backing of one of the world's richest countries. And they were also aided by loyalists in the colonies. And by loyalists we mean American colonists who remained loyal to Britain and in many cases aided their soldiers on this side of the Atlantic. However, they did have some weaknesses. Just as the Americans were the home team, the British were the away team, and they were a great distance from home, which meant a delay in shipping men and supplies. They were not familiar with the land, and they had, their leader, they had weak leadership in that their leaders often were not very aggressive and allowed George Washington to continue fighting even at points when it looked like the war was nearly over. And they lacked the motivation of a, of a personal cause, and ultimately their, the war effort from, by Britain lost the support of the British people. So we're going to look at several battles in these two lessons, and the first of these is Lexington and Concord. Uh, British troops from Boston had been sent to capture a hidden weapons stash and to arrest Samuel Adams and John Hancock, who were important leaders of the Sons of Liberty. However, word of this had gotten to, to American spies, and so they were given prior notice because three men, William Dawes, Sam Prescott, and Paul Revere, rode out that night before and warned the militia that the British regulars were coming. So the morning of April 19, 1775, this force of British regulars were met by colonial militia, and a militia is a private volunteer service. They are not professional soldiers. They called them the Minutemen because the story goes that the, that the colonial militia would be ready to fight at a moment's notice and a minute's notice. So they were met at Lexington, Massachusetts, and here the first shot, the shot heard around the world, was fired that began the American Revolution. After easily defeating this colonial militia, the British force marched on to Concord, Massachusetts, but there they found few weapons, but they did meet more American militia. And on their way back to Boston, they had to march down this road and on that march they were continually, continuously fired on by Minutemen and uh, took heavy casualties on the way back. So here we have the beginning of the war. And in fact, what's the importance of it? It is the first real battle of the American Re Revolution. Again, this is a full year before independence. No war has been declared. Independence has not yet been declared. But for all practical purposes, the American Revolution has begun. And secondly, as a reaction to this, uh, the Second Continental Congress was called, and they created the Continental Army, which brought together the militias of the different colonies, 
and they brought these under the command of General George Washington. We mentioned him in, as a hero of the British, actually, in the French and Indian War, and he was the best qualified and best known to lead this force. Next, we get the Declaration of Independence in 1776, about a year later. There are some battles that happened in between, but we're going to focus here on the Declaration of Independence and, again, that date, 1776. It's a very important date in American history. Now, Thomas Jefferson is the main author of this. He was actually part of the Committee of Five, made up of, of a number of several other people, including John Adams and Benjamin Franklin. But like we said, Thomas Jefferson was the main author. The parts of the Declaration are the preamble, which is the opening paragraph, the Declaration of Natural or Unalienable Rights. We're talking about uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which we've heard before. And the next part is the list of grievances. Now, grievances is a complaint. So here they list all their complaints, and they, uh, they address these to King George himself, and finally their resolution of independence. It's approved by the Continental Congress on July 2nd, and signed on July 4th, 1776. Commit that date, guys, July 4th, 1776, which is why the 4th of July is known today as Independence Day. But the war continues, and the next month we get a very important battle, August 1776. This is when General Howe of the, of the British landed at Long Island, New York, just outside of New York City, with a very large British Army and Navy, uh, more than 30, uh, force of more than 30,000 men. They greatly outnumbered the American, uh, the American Continental Army, and the Americans took about 1,400 casualties, but instead of putting the war to an end right there, General Howe allowed Washington to escape during the night, and Washington took his army to Pennsylvania. Uh, the British would hold New York for the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the war, and New York became a center of uh, a loyalist support. So why is this important? Uh, just like World War II had its D-Day when the uh, Allied forces landed and landed in Europe, uh, this is Britain's D-Day when they invaded America with a large force. Uh, this invasion shows the British strength of their overwhelming size and their and their better training. However, it shows the British weakness of a lack of aggressive leaders. At a point when they could have captured Washington's army and perhaps ended the war before it even started, they allowed Washington to escape and the Continental Army to survive to fight another day. Around this time, America's best propaganda writer, Thomas Paine, remember him from Common Sense, uh, writes another pamphlet called The American Crisis in which he urged Americans to keep up the fight for independence even in the face of, uh, the face of overwhelming odds and things looking pretty bleak at this time. This quote from here, these are the times that try men's souls, the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country, but he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. We're going to analyze what that, what that phrase, particularly the summer soldier and sunshine patriot, means. And that moves on to another battle in the Battle of Trenton. Between, uh, during the whole winter of, and the whole fall and winter of 1776, the Americans face defeat after defeat, and things are looking pretty bad. It's looking like the war might be over uh, pretty soon here. So the Americans desperately need a victory and something to give them hope. So on December 25th, 1776, yes, Christmas Day, or actually the night, uh, Christmas night, uh, Washington crosses the Delaware River with his fort, with his forces, and he attacks a, uh, a band, a camp of Hessians. The Hessians were hired soldiers that, the, that the, the British hired to fight for them, and he captures them at Trenton, New Jersey. The Hessians were caught completely by surprise, and you can guess by doing it on Christmas Day why they were, they, they were so surprised. And this force, uh, they captured supplies, cannons, ammo, and the amazing thing is the Americans suffered no casualties, no deaths, and very few minor injuries. So this victory at Trenton really boosted their morale and gave them, uh, and gave them hope, and also increased recruitment at a time when the, the uh, Continental Army was desperate for new soldiers. So why is Trenton important? One, like we just said, it gave the American cause hope when uh, they uh, looked like the American war effort was near collapse. And it showed the American strengths of Washington's leadership and their strong motivation to fight. So let's look at our Lesson 9 thoughts. Why do you think Ralph Waldo Emerson would call the Battle of Lexington Concord the shot heard around the world? What do you think Payne meant by the summer soldier and sunshine patriot? And finally, what do the battles of New York and Trenton teach us about George Washington's military leadership? In our next lesson, we're going to learn about the how foreign, foreign help will, and foreign allies will bring Americans victory, and we'll see you then.